I'm throwing some more test tiles in the dark clay because I'm running out and I've got my new kiln, which is what you can hear ticking away over there. Um, it's just starting to warm up and because a new kiln possibly means that um, my old firing schedule won't behave in exactly the same way, I need a bunch of test tiles just to make sure that I can test enough to tweak the firing schedule to um, suit the clay in places. So that's what I'm up to. Um, for those that haven't seen, I will link a better video that goes into it in more detail, but I throw my test tiles uh, essentially an inverted T and I use um, kind of the reclaim from all my still throw or scraps. So like when I'm wedging out clay, any bits left at the end I just shove in a bag which keeps them in a throwable condition. It does mean this is slightly stiffer than would be ideal. Um, but the upside of that is that it doesn't matter for test tiles and it means you don't have to reclaim the clay and get it back to absolutely perfect like you would if you were going to try and throw um, anything you wanted to keep as a sellable piece. You can just get close enough with this. So, um, got my new kiln. This is its second firing. I did the uh, baking the elements in firing last night and I now have a glaze test firing going on. First thoughts are very well put together and thought out um, and a lot quieter than the old one. Now I think, because I have a one of the things that goes over the wire coming into the studio, like a like a smart meter but not a meter, just a, a smart energy usage calculator. So I can see how much power the studio is using as a total. And I'm pretty sure Hopefully someone will chime in who actually knows for certain, or maybe I'll do some googling to see if it's the case. But the scut is, while it's warming up, like up until the point where it actually needs its full power, what it seems to be doing is splitting the elements into two sections and only using half of them at a time. So it toggles on and off twice as fast as my old kiln would, in fact more quickly than twice as fast I'd say. Seems to cycle on and off really fast but only uses half of the total power that the kiln should be using per thing which is excellent because that means they've used a relay, two relays half the size of the one they'd have to use otherwise which makes it quieter. Um, for those that are unfamiliar with relays they're electromagnetic switches where a small current uses a magnet to physically throw a bigger switch essentially so it just moves a, a contact from side to side and it means that you can for example it was given to me when i first heard about them was lift buttons and if you've ever seen uh, footage of old lifts they had they didn't have relay switches the person who was controlling the lift so you normally had someone there to control the lift was throwing one of the massive switches that you kind of clunk down into place and the reason is because the amount of power needed to move uh, a lift is huge and if you ran that amount of power directly through a button it would fry the button or the button would be so hard to push and so huge that you wouldn't be able to and what a relay does is it just sides well it, it creates a physical switch that's powered by a lower current so you can push a small button and it throws uh, a mechanical bigger switch using the electricity from that small button so very sensible it's what allows the kilns to have small controllers throwing um, switches that essentially are turning on and off a lot of power but if i'm right scup have used two for half power and the kiln is on twice as much for half the power, which from the point of view of the studio makes it's great. Because rather than the lights dimming slightly and it drawing power at somewhere close to the limit of what the studio max is, 
meaning I have to be a bit more careful if I had the heater on and used my heat gun and had the kiln firing that would probably be too much because that would they're like three kilowatts two kilowatts and then that's about seven kilowatts so it adds up to a lot of power by doing it this way actually presumably up until somewhere near peak it doesn't actually draw a stupid amount of current so that part's very sensible i love the fact that the bottom section detaches so the skirts come in set well they, they come whole but they're detachable intersections and it means that when you set the stand in place um, you can detach the base from the kiln position the base on the stand so you very easy to manoeuvre them exactly where you want them and you'll see what the kind of physical footprint of the kiln will be rather than having to try and manhandle it all yourself and with the bigger kilns you can take them off into individual sections so you can basically take your are provided with a whole kiln and if you need to move it from one place to another like up a flight of stairs or whatever you can literally take it two bits and then move it up in the individual bands um, which is a very neat idea my initial plan was that I was going to be using both kilns kind of the old kiln would be um, for bisque and the new kiln would be for glazes when I went to move the old kiln the wheels had stuck themselves to the concrete plinth it was on and the metal had weakened to the point that when I lifted it up it just tore so the wheels pulled the bottom off the kiln and it now I could build it a stand for it to sit on but I think it's safe to say that kiln is not being used for kind of general studio work if I repair it it will be to turn it into a raku kiln or some or possibly uh, turn it into a reduction kiln um, but for the I'll probably just sell it on eBay for spares or repairs or something like that or maybe keep it in case I want the bricks for anything but um, yeah and it's slightly concerning that it's designed in such a way that the wheels are attached to I think it's one mil stainless steel plate which obviously isn't that much for the weight of a kiln and then they're um, the type of wheels that turn as you push so that it's on caster so it can roll but what that means is that the wheel is essentially if that's the wheel the kind of the arm of the wheel comes up here so if the whole thing wants to twist and it just meant that all four wheels have just collapsed under the, the weight once the metal's given away so i'm not overly impressed with that um obviously it's done a lot of firings and it's you know i've had it for for years at this point but i still think that's a a fairly bad way of designing them but um yeah very impressed with the scut i'll post a better video on it when i get a chance i've got a video of loading the um initial because you have to fire them empty when you get it so which i'll probably post first just because that's already recorded um so depending on when you see this is my i might have had it for a day or two and i might have the results of the glaze fire in which case i will do something about that um, if you want to see more current things, I'm posting about it on Instagram stories as it happens. But um, by the time you watch this, it's probably too late for the setup ones. But um, yeah, so I'll link to the test tiles if you want to know more about what I'm doing with these. They're very straightforward. I just literally, at this point, I don't even have to be anything fancy because I know what my glazes should look like. And at the moment, I'm just trying to make sure I have enough to test to get my glazes back to that point and how much I have to adjust the firing. Um, yeah, new kiln content coming whenever I get around to recording it.